Jsou to real estate look at my gas leakage detector. It's a double detector, it can detect flammable gases but also carbon monoxide or CO. If you have gas appliances, it's good to have a double detector because you can have unburned gases leaking from the faulty device or faulty valve or broken pipes or cylinder. And those flammable gases can cause suffocation or explosion and they are usually methane, propane or butane or a mixture of them. A town gas that comes in pipes into your house is usually mostly methane. It's also called a natural gas. And it's good to have an indication of leaking gases without any combustion or flame going out in the appliance or so. But it's also a good idea to have a detection of a carbon monoxide or CO, which comes from an incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons. This gas can be produced by gas appliances which are not working properly. Usually not enough air going in, so there is not enough oxygen for a complete combustion of the carbon, so instead of completely combusting it to carbon dioxide, it's only combusted to carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is quite dangerous. It's much more toxic than the unburned gas and you also can't smell it. The unburned gas, for example the natural gas that comes from the pipes that go into your house, is quite smelly. And there is also some chemical added to it to make it smelly so you can detect it using your nose. They usually add some mercaptans or tiles into it to make it smelly, but a carbon monoxide is not smelly and it's much more toxic, so it's quite dangerous. If you breathe it, you don't realize it soon enough. You feel sleepy or drunken or you feel like you're coming down with a flu or something like this and then you pass out and then you suffocate and die. People can feel the symptoms of the poisoning, but they don't realize it's this gas because it's not smelly, they can't smell it. So they don't realize that they should run away from the place or open the windows and doors or close the gas valve or turn off the gas appliances, basically. They feel sick, but they don't realize it's a gas poisoning, so they sit down into a chair or lay down into a bed and later lose consciousness and die, basically. So it's a very good idea to have a detection of carbon monoxide. It's not smelly and it's dangerous even in a small concentration. So this is my double gas detector and it's a box with some accessories, some mounting screws and some holder and this manual. It runs on AC mains but it can also have a backup battery, 9 volts. Here it says the concentrations of the carbon monoxide to trigger the alarm. At 50 ppm or 50 parts per million, it takes 60 to 90 minutes to trigger the alarm, which is quite a long time actually. At 100 ppm, it takes 10 to 40 minutes to trigger the alarm and at 300 ppm of carbon monoxide, it takes less than 3 minutes to trigger the alarm. And here it says the concentrations of flammable gases to trigger the alarm, like propane, butane or methane. And a natural gas is mostly methane. And for a natural gas, the explosive concentration in the air is from 4.3% to 15%. And the alarm must be triggered at 6% of the lowest explosive concentration, basically. And some numbers, the main voltage frequency, the power consumption during the alarm and the power consumption in standby and the battery, nickel metal hydride battery for backup basically and the battery should last for 100 minutes of backup or 10 minutes of an alarm basically, which is not so long actually. But given the consumption, the battery is not really for a long time. And the loudness of the alarm, some temperatures. It takes 180 seconds to basically set up after you power it. Probably because the sensors have to heat up using some heater in them. And the heater is probably also the reason for this consumption, which is relatively high. And the life of it is 5 years. And the reaction time, 20 seconds. And it also says that you should only use those brands of the battery, which is a bit questionable. And here is the picture where to install it. For light gases, lighter than the air, like carbon monoxide or natural gas or methane, 
it should be close to the ceiling and for propane or butane or LPG, which are heavier than the air, it should be close to the floor. And here is the detector with this main cable and a European plug. It has a display here, three LEDs, a speaker, a test button to test it probably and here is the battery cover for the 9 volt backup battery, which should be rechargeable. Nickel metal hydride battery. And the LEDs are power, error and alarm. And here is the display. So let's try to test it and also measure the power consumption. And the power is low, so let's plug it into this socket, which is 10 times more sensitive, so it's times 0.1. Vítá vás detektor hořlavých plynů a oxidu uhelnatého. Počkejte prosím 3 minuty, zařízení se inicializuje. And it's talking. And here's the countdown to the explosion. Or actually to start it up. And the power is 1.8 watts. And it's counting down 3 minutes. And the sensors are basically heating up. So let's wait for it to start up. And now it's about to be ready. And that's it. And now it draws 1.5 watts, which is not so much, even though it's still not negligible for a device that runs 24-7 for years, of course. So the power settles at 1.54 watts and it's running. And here's the LCD display, which is actually not the easiest to read. You have to take a look at it from above to see it. When you take a look at it from below, you can actually see the inactive segments. Now I can basically see all of the segments. And from above I can see it displays 0 ppm of carbon monoxide and it indicates main power. And the display definitely could have been slightly better. Let's shine a torch on it and let's look for an angle to read it. And here you can see the LEDs and the power LED is on. The error and alarm LEDs are off and there is a test button. But of course the button basically tests the speaker, not the actual sensors of the gases. The button doesn't really seem like a proper test to me. Now let's try to test it properly. Let's begin with the flammable gas sensor. Let's test it on a natural gas, which is mostly methane. And this is a bit dodgy, but of course I'm not going to use too much gas for the test to cause an explosion. And with this stove it's probably not even possible to release too much gas with no flame, because there is so-called gas stop system. And here you can see the ignition electrode, which basically ignites the flame electrically using a high voltage. It basically arcs from this into this to ignite it and here is the gas stop sensor. And if the flame goes out, it cools down and it closes the valve. And here you can see the gas nozzle, the gas goes from the nozzle basically through this and then the gas goes through all those slots and it basically burns. When I turn it on, it looks like this. Here is the flame. And you can regulate it using this valve. And you probably ask, how can I initially turn the gas on if this sensor is not yet heated? And it's a clever system. You basically have to press this button in. And then you can turn it on. By pressing it in, I turn on the electric ignition, but also I override this gas stop system. So to turn it on, you have to press this button in for several seconds to basically override the gas stop valve until this sensor heats up. If you release the button too early, the flame disappears because the sensor is not yet heated. But now let's try to test the detector. Let's simulate a gas leakage. It's running. There is a flame. And now there is no flame. And the gas is running. 
what's going to happen. And it clicks and the gas stop system turns the gas off. And does it do something? Nothing. Now let's try to test it once more and let's leave the flame running for a bit longer to heat the sensor more and have a longer delay. Now it clicks. One point two percent of gas. And the gas stop system is already off. Still alarm. And now the alarm stops because for a methane it triggers the alarm above 0.25%. So it seems to work with methane or natural gas. And now of course let's enjoy some Christmas candles and some carbon monoxide to test the device. Of course it's not a good idea to intentionally produce a carbon monoxide, especially indoors, but this one has to be tested and it's going to be just a small quantity. Can I produce a carbon monoxide using an incomplete combustion of a Christmas candle, which is basically just hydrocarbons? The candle goes out now and there should be some carbon monoxide in it. Does it detect something? Zero. Still zero ppm of carbon monoxide. Even more carbon monoxide. Or maybe no carbon monoxide at all, which is good for my safety, but not for the sake of this video, of course. Well, it briefly shows something. I think 44 ppm of carbon monoxide. We have some results, but not enough to trigger the alarm. So let's try something else. Let's try to put the experiment into a baking tray. The carbon monoxide is lighter than the air. It goes up, so let's put it on a box. So it's as high as possible, like this. And let's put the candles in it. And let's cover it. And see what happens. Can you see the display? Still zero ppm and the candles still burning. 39, 42, 43 ppm, even more, 50. This seems to work. 66, 67 and the candles are dimmer now. 88, 91, candles very dim. 110 ppm of CO. The candles now went out, but it's still going up. 120 ppm of carbon monoxide. 126. 125. 4, 3. It goes down actually now. Is it going to trigger the alarm? It goes down now. No alarm. I probably have to get it to 300 ppm for 3 minutes to trigger the alarm. Do I manage to do it? I can't get over 110 or 120. So let's try to keep it there for about 10 to 40 minutes. 138. This is the highest so far and there is still a very small flame in the candle. It's 200 and still a tiny flame in the candle. And here is the alarm. So I finally managed to trigger it. That's nice. Prosím, 
Pozor, únik oxidu uhelnatého. Oxidu uhelnatého. No the alarm disappears and it shows a zero. And now, should I try to take a look in it? But no, there is a seal on it with some series number and I would lose my warranty and... I'm just kidding, of course, let's take a look in it. There are four screws in it and it opens like this, probably. And that's it. The speaker seems to be on a connector. I can unplug it and this cover comes off completely. And here you can see the internals of it. Here's the LCD display with pins on one side of it. They go into this board and this board is connected with the main board using this cable and there is this LED backlight for the display and the main board has quite a lot of it in it. This is probably one of the gas sensors and here is the other. This one has a mesh on it and this one looks like almost like a battery. But it's probably the sensor. And it seems to have a switching power supply. The main comes in here. There is a fusible resistor, a bridge rectifier, some diode, control chip for the switching power supply. But it also probably contains the switching transistor. Here is the switching transformer in it, some resistors, capacitor, some diode, another resistors, a bigger capacitor, this is the primary capacitor, 4.7 micro, 400 volts, and here's probably the secondary capacitor here, and another big capacitor here, here you can see the LEDs, on the secondary side there is also some diode for rectification, some small auxiliary capacitor, resistors, capacitors, SMD ones, and a lot of chips, some 3-pin chip, 8-pin chip, a lot of pins chip, another 8-pin chip, maybe this is a transistor or maybe a 3-pin chip, some shotky diode, another 8-pin chip, a diode, probably shotky and here is the button for the test. And from the other side of the board, the board is basically just on two screws and from the other side of it, there is nothing, basically, just connections. It's a double-sided board. And here you can probably see the marking of the chips, but the biggest chip has no marking. It's probably a microcontroller. And there is also an inductor on a ferrite core. And the flammable gas sensor is getting quite hot. The carbon monoxide sensor isn't hot. And there is another chip under the display. And one of the sensors seem to have just two terminals and the other one has six terminals. Even though some of them can be doubled. And also the isolation of the switching power supply seems to be quite nice here. Now let's put it back together. And now it's back together and it still seems to work. And of course it's also possible to test the flammable gas sensor using a lighter which contains a propane or butane or probably mixture of both. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon, I really appreciate your support. And Merry Christmas to all of my viewers and here's my Christmas tree made of capacitors for my future Tesla coil. Here you can see the capacitors and of course the Christmas tree is with tungsten lamps on it, no stupid LEDs. 
and some present under it.